Nicholas in San Jose. Next up, Willard and JD. Hey, Nicholas, what you doing? What's up, Willard? What's up, JD? Great show. I'm just kind of tuning in, listening back and forth. Um, but wanted to chime in on it, and I, I feel like it's a little bit ridiculous talking about who's first, second, or third when the reality is is that um, you know Brock Purdy has shown what he's shown, but he's also earned the right coming off of injury to show that he is the player that we saw the last eight games of the season. He worked his way from third string all the way to first, right, in the playoffs. And then as far as the other second and third string goes, the reality is, is based on our O-line, we really might see all three of these quarterbacks, like all of them, because it's so weak. And there's a very good potential that Brock's going to get hurt based on injury or O-line. So we're, we, there's a very good possibility that we're going to see what everybody has. And then also, Who's going to step up like Brock did last year? Who's going to be ready? And who's going to do it with class? Brock did it with class. He sat there at third string, and when his number was called, he showed up and showed out. What I'm really concerned about is the O-line. Well, Nicholas, what, what Nicholas, we- Nicholas, you know that that was none of their starters, right? Correct. I understand that. I, I, I understand that. Pre, I don't judge preseason on starters or anything. Like, I, I really don't care about it. I'm looking at who is trying to work their way up to the top and what rookie has potential when when our starters, when our ones are tired, who's going to replace them? If we recall, the the reason why Brock got hurt, it wasn't a first string. It was a second string, right? And it could be based off, oh, well, the tight end, he wasn't supposed to block him and just let somebody pass him, whatever. But it's instincts. Brock has instincts. But what second string player is going to show up and show that, hey, I have the right to be here playing with the ones, and that's what I'm interested in seeing. Um, and really quick, before I let you guys go, you guys have a good show. I don't want to hold the show hostage. <laughs> um, the Nick Bosa thing, super concerned about that, guys. Like, really? Let's get this guy paid. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. Like, it's getting to an uncomfortable level now to, to, to a certain degree. Um, by the same token, I don't think there's any scenario other than Nick Bosa showing up and playing week one on the table. I Like, I have 100% confidence in that. Totally agree with you on that, and I'm somebody that does think it's a little more contentious. And I've I've thought that from from day one, the jump when Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch were at the podium the day before the first training camp practice, and just it was the answer that John Lynch gave hmm. that that made me think. And I'd have to go back and hear it again. I don't want to misquote what he said, but it was just the the tone of it was. He's like, this is a little different, or you know, it's a, like a little different negotiation or whatever. And I'm thinking, yeah, you're dealing with the Boses. You're going to pay that. Like, this is not some negotiation where you're getting over on an agent or you're, you know, going to make somebody take a little bit less, even if he's still the highest paid. It's like, no, it's going to be he. He's the highest paid, top of the market. And then you're going right. to add a little to it, right? And then if you're uncomfortable, you're going to add a little more to that. <laughs> like so, so well, I, 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 yeah. I agree with you, but it's like, like we've all kind of. I mean, I, I don't, we all wish we could be in that position, right? Where it's like, hey, all the leverage. You want me? Well, then it it ain't gonna be. You know, it ain't. I'll, I'll just use a hundred dollars. Like you're not paying me a hundred dollars. You're paying me five hundred dollars. Right. Like if you, it's not, not even if the even if the market might be three fifty. Like no, you're paying me a thousand. All of it. Yes. Like, it, this isn't gonna be team friendly. Right. It's yeah. just there isn't gonna be any part of it that's gonna be. Like you're gonna go figure out how you need to structure it to make it fit, but I'm getting all the money. He brings up the O line. Are you worried about the O line? Yeah, you are. Not based on yesterday, right? Based more on camp because there have been a lot of days where the first team O line, it, it's been there's been guys Shaky. having to be having to move. Just, Purdy's had to move. Yeah, a couple couple a lot things of wood, on this. A lot of would be sat. Well, the, a couple things on this. First of all, just because of uh, you know, when I was doing shows in in San Diego, a lot of my uh a lot of the co-hosts happened to be former offensive linemen. Okay. Same thing when, you know, when I'm doing uh, Fox on Sunday, Ephraim, former offensive lineman. Uh I'm going to keep saying it till I get a drip out of you, Grandy. Jeez, my goodness. But anyway, uh point being is uh, one thing I learned, all of them will say the same thing. Offensive line play is like a concert. So if you're looking at a preseason game and you're trying to find one guy that stands out, you're like, oh, he's good. That doesn't make much sense. 
the group needs to work together. And one thing I've noticed with the 49ers the last few years, there have been injuries, and guys will get thrown in, and you're like, what? We're going with Dan Brunskill? Oh, my gosh. Aaron Donald's going to eat him alive. Yeah, it doesn't happen. And then what happens? It doesn't happen. So I've got a little more faith in the concert of the five and then the extension of the six, seven, or eight once they get in there, right? Remember, Aaron Banks is terrible. No, he's not. When the concert all works together, when you're standing next to Trent Williams. So I, one, I've, I've, I've got a little faith in that. But secondarily, if it doesn't work, well, you don't need to worry about your quarterback situation. The yeah, because you, yeah, you're not winning the, the Super The team's going to suck. Yeah. You can't be good if your offensive line's not good. Well, you and look, you can scheme it up, and I think the left side of the line is still pretty good. It's it Where there have been issues, even with the ones, has been the interior. It's been, it's been the interior and the interior right. It's been over the center. It's been over the right guard. And, you know, McKivitz is going to have a big time... Uh, at right tackle, he's got a big time yeah. roll and target on him. Like he's going to be, he's he's once you get away from all you know, Bosa and the quarterbacks and all that. Like I think you can make a case he's the most, he's the kind of the biggest question mark, if you will. Like like how does he hold yep. up? Yep. You know, because you're always going to be going up against some somebody's pass rusher. I just feel like every time because the they're not putting, you know, right. if you, they're not going up against Trent. The last four years, every time a brand new offensive lineman has been thrown in, almost every time, and we're like, "Oh crap, what's this going to look like?" And then three weeks later, you're like, "Oh, I haven't even noticed what's going on." Yeah, th- yeah. because they're playing pretty well. Um, it's yeah, just something to keep an moments, eye on. No doubt, like, I, it, no there's doubt. not really a distinct opinion, and I, and I will say this. Going into training camp, I wasn't something on the list. It's something I've added to the list. It's added. Okay. I, I just like, right, you know that's what? interesting. Like, it's just like, and that's kind of what I do there. Like, everybody does their stats, and I keep numbers. I usually don't tweet them out because I don't want to get into the, the bog down of you know, everybody's numbers are different, all this other stuff. But I do make notes of things that I think are relevant for the regular season. Abs- I mean, offensive and, line. And I mean, offensive line, not quite. Looking a little more leaky than I would want it to look. Um, that will kill any NFL team season. Um, absolutely, period. Uh, you brought up the way John Lynch answered the Nick Bosa question back at the beginning of camp. Yeah. Uh, Grandy tracked it? it down. Here it is. Okay, good. I'll just tell you, you know, we have to strike the right mix of urgency. I don't like this. I don't like not having one of our best players here. We've got a really good track record that I'm proud of as a group of having our players in. But I also understand it and understand that we're going to have to exhibit some patience and understand that ultimately this thing will work out. I'm very confident in that. We're just going to have to have that right mix of urgency and patience. And again, I remain confident that we'll come to an agreement and get things taken care of so we can have one of our best players, one of the best teammates. Uh, This is the guy that addresses our team every Saturday and just gives his wisdom. We miss him and, and looking forward to the day he's coming back. The right mix of urgency and patience. That is a difficult balance to strike. Yeah, and he. I mean, he said, "I, I don't like it." Yeah, and they talked about their track record of not, you know, not having it happen. And when it has happened, it's been for a couple of days, not for the whole month. You know, right. for almost we're coming up on a month here next week of of training camp. So it, it is a little different. And the, yeah, the right balance is you're going to pay the guy everything he wants. Well, to I be think paid. they know that, yeah, right? Like know. the 49ers are not. What one thing we have not seen well, is they're they're homegrown, highly drafted players who succeed. I, they, they don't, they've paid them. Yeah, no, they, they, don't, they don't show up to the party with their pennies. They've paid them, but they always like to think they're yeah. making them sweat it. I know. It's I know. Like, it. It, I, it reminds me of you know the war. The Warriors not offering Steph the full max and or like the full super. There was like a report they didn't offer him the full super max, and he wanted a no trade clause, and they didn't give him the no trade clause. Like, there's always this little. Like, and that's Steph Curry. Like this little. Now, eventually, they did give him the the all Amen. of the money. But it's like there's this, there is this, you know, we're we're the organization, we're going to be smarter than everybody, even with the best player in the world. I will share this with you. Um, I've had this conversation on the air one time with Prag Marate, okay, who is the contractual yeah. guy for the 49ers. He teaches a class at Stanford 
called The Art of Negotiation. Sharp. Yeah. <laughs> if you teach a class called The Art of Negotiation, it means that you basically are um, almost addicted to simply the negotiation. Yeah. Therefore, you don't just, you, you don't cave no matter what. He joked with me that he takes the art of negotiation to discussing where to go to dinner with his wife. If, if, if he actually wants to go here and he, right? So it's almost like a little bit of a game, I think. And you're right in your assessment that the 49ers want to come away feeling some sort of victory in the art of the negotiation. Yeah. It, it, Spare now, that with Bosa. Yeah, of course. Well, but but Parag's like spare that with me, like, I mean, yeah. you know how I rest my case. well, right, and that's how you end up with a holdout. You do have two sides here who are both very, very leveraged and highly powered. Yeah, you do, and both forty nine is going to win. Well, I mean, that's an interesting way to say it. This is the NFL; the player almost never wins. You've got some quarterbacks. Okay, then let, let's see this thing get to Labor Day if Bosa wants $10 million more dollars or $5 million more guaranteed or what. Like I don't think it's like that because I think that this the organization and the player have a pretty baseline respect for one another, I think. I, think, I could be wrong. I think. It's I, not like the Niners like, think that they're not going to make him the highest paid defensive player ever. They know this. They've said this. It's just the level at which. Yeah. And, I mean, and that's like maybe Bosa wants the number to stand up for a while. Like maybe, but maybe Bosa, maybe it's hey, maybe. I, I'm the highest. I want to be the highest paid, and I'm going to be the highest paid. But you know what? I want to be the highest paid for like the next three years. But it, because, never, but it maybe, never. It well, can't work that well, way because the next tell, guy's going to you know come what? in and say it's my turn. Tell Nick Bosa that. Well, well, that's but, but then Nick's in the wrong. Well, in I, my opinion, because not if, not if you, not if they need you more no, than you need them. Is, I know, but this is this is the whole Lamar Jackson, Deshaun Watson thing, right? Like Lamar Jackson is sitting there going, Deshaun got that, so now I get more because I'm better than Deshaun. And the Ravens are like, right? So the Browns are idiots, though, and and, and everyone's right. like, yeah, they are, <laughs> and it creates a problem. But Bosa is the kind of player that. He might be worth that, and you might have to tell the next guy he's not getting. That. Maybe, maybe like that. I, it's a unique situation. Really I, I understand what you're saying about the way it normally works. Like Joe right. Burrow is not going to walk in and be like, "I know Herbert got that, but I'll take a little bit less." If if I know like, that I'm know? the greatest player in the game at the position, and and we're negotiating, and I know that. Your defense without me is a, is average. With me, it might be elite. Without me, it's average. And I yep. think we know enough about the Niners to say that's I probably agree true. It. I agree with it. Yep. Then and you're saying and you're saying I want to pay you X, and I'm saying no, it's going to be Y. Right, but X, we're, but but X. If you're is, saying, we're yeah. going to make you the highest paid right. player in the game, and I'm going to say yeah, I want that and ten million more or whatever yeah. it is. I and, mean, I don't know. And that's I, a Bosa thing. Yeah. Like, that's a Bosa thing. And and if you don't believe that the Bosas... The Bosas hold out. ...won't do that. Right, the Bosas hold you, out. If you don't think the Bosas won't give, like, okay, well, okay, well, come find me on Labor Day. I guess... Come here, find me on Labor Day when we're two days away from practice for you know, to go to yeah, Pittsburgh. it's game week. Like... I don't think it's going to get to that. I, I don't either, but... Like I think Joey, it could like, also already be done. Like Joey Bosa signed with the Chargers. Yeah. So you know, no, I, look, they I, will agree I, at some I, point. I'm not saying it's <laughs> in danger. Right. I'm just saying, right. like, what do we? I, it in a way, it, it it annoys me that it like it should already be done. And yeah, I think it's on the a, and I think it's on the Niners that it's that maybe it should be I, done. Maybe you, you are. It does feel like they're you're having a you know what match. And uh, and both sides are probably. And it's like don't worry about how it yeah. impacts the next guy for you that comes in and like don't worry about There's that. An... If you want to break the next guy's eggs over a deal, like like you tried to do with Debo and other, fine. If you want to do that, fine. And Kittle, remember, Kittle got weird for a minute, and then it wasn't really. Yeah. Like if you want to you want to do that with everybody well, else, that's fine. I, 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 Nick yeah. Bosa is the best player in the game at that position. 
There's an equal piece of me that would believe that everything you just heard John Lynch say um, is window dressing, and the 49ers actually um, have bubble wrap around Nick and told him, we'll see you for Chargers week. Maybe. That like I would I'm not saying I believe that. I, I think he I'm saying I would believe that. I think I think there was also a he might not do anything for three weeks other than work out in the in the weight room, but we'd rather we want him here. Yeah. Yeah. Like we're not gonna find you. Work out on the side. You don't have to be at practice, but at least you know, at least show up. Um, I want to read this because we just got uh this is what I would refer to as a super chat. On our YouTube feed, brought to you by First NorCal Credit Union, a $10 comment. Thank you, Michael Alanese, what? who writes, Are you afraid, down the line, we won't be able to obtain our D-line or online depth, which was a major concern yesterday. I fear paying QB money to a non-QB. We've got a lot of bloated contracts. How would you address Wait, that? On Bosa? He's saying that, it, like, giving basically quarterback money, and it's not. We're not talking about quarterback no. money. Quarterback money is now north of 50. Right. Nick's going to get north of 30. Right. But anyway, um, he says, I fear paying quarterback money to a non-QB. We got a lot of bloated contracts. Basically, are you afla- afraid that down the line, this will prevent us from obtaining other D-line and O-line depth? Possibly. You're gonna have to cultivate it, like that. Like part of the deal when you have great players and you have to pay, like, and you have to pay them is you're gonna have to yeah, find I, less expensive players in other areas. I don't fear it. I think the Niners are really good on the cap. Well, I think the 49ers can always find maybe not the money they want, but they can always find the money they absolutely need. Could Bosa well, slash the way Debo and Ayuk play? Lead to a situation well, that's difficult next year with those three. Sure, but here's the deal: they're not going to be able to keep everybody. Like, the, and and it's been written about. Well, and, and again, it's to me. But it, what do you mean by everybody? Like Debo or Ayuk are probably not on the team next year. I don't probably know not both. I, I, probably I not both. I don't know that that's yeah. It, it's. I think maybe I wouldn't say probably not. I think they can do it. We'll see. I think they can do it, but a lot depends on what those guys look like this year. I'm not saying they can't, but at some point, like it's it's like the debate we would have with the about the Warriors. And in the NBA, it's different because you can keep paying your own as long right. as you pay the tax. The NFL, you got to restructure. Eventually, you end up it gets in you. trouble. It gets so you. So at some point, yeah. we already saw. I mean, they chose to move on from DeForest Buckner well before. You know, well before they they needed to, because they need they felt they needed a preemptive strike there to to keep their financial house in order. This thing with Kittle and maybe it's Kittle, maybe it's Kittle. You know, this it's. But my point is, it's somebody. There, the world is not going to exist where the 49ers are going to have Kittle and Ayuk and Debo McCaffrey, and McCaffrey and Williams, all these guys and Warner. All, and then if Purdy is really good well that's still you don't have to worry is, about that for a few years but event, but again come, you're not going to really have to I, I I wonder if people know this you're not going to really 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 okay. have to pay the piper on Purdy let's say it all works it's out like great 2 years 20 no more like 27 because remember uh, you're talking about a player that will not have even made a million dollars a year yet so uh, but what was his deal well, his deal was a four-year rookie contract. Okay. At, so they did do a four-year. At, le- at less than $4 million total dollars. Yeah, it was like nine. He's like nine. So you're going to get to a point. Let's say you get to a point where you're even allowed to extend him. You're not allowed to do right. that yet with Brock Purdy. Let's say you get to a point where you do want to extend him. He's not going to be in a spot no matter how well it goes. You can win a Super Bowl. He's not going to be in a spot to command $55 million a year. No. When he's scheduled to make one. The upcoming year, like you would put something in front of him that says, "Hey, you've got one more year at one million dollars next year." You know, we would like to extend you. Um, this is football; your body could snap in half. This is what we're offering you right now. If you don't take it, I, I, you know yeah, what I mean. Like the, I, the Niners would still have some leverage I, to not pay top of the market for a while on Brock Purdy. I think. I think if he's the real deal, yep. and again, if we don't, if he's the real deal, <laughs> they're going to have to deal with it. I think at some point sooner than 
three years from now. But dealing with it does not mean top of the market. No, but when you have other players that are top of the market, eventually that, like... Brock Purdy's not going to go into the fourth year of his deal thinking, like, I'm holding out and I want to get traded to the Titans or something like that. Like, Brock Purdy... And look, I don't... like. the contract's a contract, but if I'm Brock Purdy and I ball out this year and win a Super Bowl, I'm not playing next year for nine hundred thousand. You have to. Oh. Not, Again, no, I'm not, saying, no, you no, like literally league rules. Next year is only year three. For his seven so for his because he was a because, seventh rounder. And because it's a four year deal, he would have two years left. You can't like the 49ers would not even be allowed to extend him yet. They would not even be allowed to extend him. So there's nothing they could do. So he would be holding no, out. It's interesting because I, yeah. I hadn't even thought about it. Yeah, that. I'm not allowed. I hadn't even, to do I even it researched it. To not that out, point, yeah, but. he's not not extension eligible on, uh, until after year three. So yes, if he, if there's a Super Bowl within the next <laughs> two seasons, and, and, and then that's when Brock would be like, okay, I'm not showing up. But I'm sure the so Niners, he's got two more years yep, basically. Making, it's not until before the last year. Correct, making pennies. Making absolute pennies.